guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Bizarre Bizarre. Yeah, Bizarre Bizarre. In which we will be playing two players. Or you play couple versus couple. In the game Bizarre Bizarre, you're basically going to be playing in the town of Money Town. And you're attempting to gather booths to attract customers. Customers are going to be giving you stuff like lettuce or bucks or Washingtons and cheese and bread. And that is going to be your currency. You'll be using that currency to buy action cards as well as to buy additional booths to attract more customers. You'll be able to take five Five actions per round and each round somebody is going to be the winner. It's going to be based on the person who has the most money in today's earnings. If you get the most you get one win. If you can get five wins throughout the ten rounds of the game, whoever gets to the five first is the winner of the game Bizarre Bizarre. Let me go ahead and show you this crazy little game down below and uh, what it looks like then how to play. So here we have the game Bizarre Bizarre and everything included. And as you can see, it's a rather large board. So I move this board over here so it's easier to see. But in general, it actually will be put on this side of the board and it kind of makes a very large uh, rectangular board that kind of attaches to itself. But just so you guys can see, I put them up there. Every player is going to uh, be on one side of the board or team. So you'll have uh, one or two people here and one or two people here, depending if you're playing couples or not. And everybody is going to start with one vendor card from the deck as well as five of any type of resources. Now, these are all the resources in the game. You got the Benjamins, you got uh, these lettuce, you've got the bread, you've got cheese, and you've got bucks. And just put them in an area in which everybody can go ahead and reach. These over here are points you'll be adding to your today's earnings area whenever you place down a booth or whenever you place down an assistant. There's fives and threes. They're both front and back. You've got these as well, which are called bot and frozen space or tokens. The bot ones we place down on these booths areas when you've actually bought them, spending the resources required to buy them. And the frozen are just basically meaning that these customers get frozen after you've chosen to move them or not with an action. You're also going to have these day one tokens, which you'll place whenever you win a day or specifically one round. And if you can get to five, you'll win by placing all five in this area here. You're also going to delve out five of these bizarre cards. You'll start from the bucks all the way to bread. Make sure the deck is shuffled. There's also going to be these customers and or shopper cards that you'll be shuffling and dealing and leaving face up for people to go ahead and switch between the board here. Vendor cards are face down. And if you want to play with the expert mode, you can go ahead and take these extra cards here with ease on them and simply shuffle them along with the deck there. And then you can go ahead and deal them out just like you normally would in a normal game. Otherwise, though, this is the basic setup for the game. This is the board here. You can have one side for one player and one side for another player and or team. And then there's starting spaces for each of the shoppers that are going to have these little green areas here that you can go ahead and place these guys down on. Each of the shoppers have the corresponding different currencies in which they will be giving booths as long as they are adjacent to them with these little arrows here. Booths will have a specific cost to them. There's a starting vendor you get that has a basically a wild area for both of the players. There's a space for today's earnings, which means at the end of every round, you're going to score points. And based on the points, you're going to determine whether or not you win the day. Winning the day is the most important thing thing. These are the one play areas and basically just means that every round or day you're going to be getting to play five actions going back and forth and when all of them are done that's going to signify the end of a day meaning that you're going to go ahead and score and see who won the day. That's pretty much the basic idea of everything in the game. Let's go ahead and begin by showing you how to play. So let's show you how to play a game of Bizarre Bizarre. We'll show you at least one day of play so you get an idea of what you can do and how the game functions and how you're going to win. Now, to begin with, everybody's going to get one of these play option cards, and it also tells you how you're going to receive currency at the end of the day and what actions you can do. Uh, you can choose to either purchase, you can choose to get, use your shoppers, or you can choose to use cards. And the final thing you can do is choose to pass. When you purchase, so for one action, you can uh, purchase a booth, uh, bought until vendor is played. So basically all you have to do is on your turn, if he wants, if he's going first, he would get the first action token and he would signify that he's taking his first action by moving that off of this little play area here. And he can go ahead and buy a booth. So he could spend two currency and then he can go ahead and buy a booth. And when you buy a booth, you simply take one of these red tokens and place it on a space, signifying that, that space has been bought. That one costs two, so he spent two. Some of them will cost three and some of them will cost one based on the amount of arrows indicating what is 
is going to be given to which booth depending on the customers and where they're located. Uh, that is one thing you can do when buying booths. Uh, there's also buying vendor cards over here, which says uh, vendor card, draw three and take one. So for this player's turn here, if he wants, he can spend one of his actions and then he can go ahead and spend five currency if he wants. So he could spend all this currency here, which is five because that's what he starts with. He can then draw the top three cards from the vendor deck, look at them, choose one of them, put it into his hand, and then discard the rest by putting them on the bottom of the deck. That will give him an extra vendor that he can go ahead and place on a bot space as an action. Speaking of that, the last thing is bizarre card. You can buy and play or buy and hold them. These are bizarre cards here, and to buy them, there's a certain cost to them. Over here is a three, over here is a one, and this is a two and a four. That signifies how much, and then down here will signify what currency you need in order to purchase the card. So for instance, if this player wanted to buy this specific one here, this twist, he's going to have to spend Benjamins and he'll spend one of them in order to pick up the card. So if he spends one Benjamin, if he happened to have one, so let's say he had these two here, he could spend this guy here. He could then go ahead and purchase this card here. When you purchase cards, that's an action, you can go ahead and play the card or save it in your hand. If you save it in your hand, the next time you go ahead and play it, it'll cost you an action to play it. So remember, using the cards when you, when you buy them is very important and can be useful, but sometimes saving them is also useful as well. When you buy a card and use it, you put it into the discard pile, and you move these cards down the track here and put a new one down from the main deck, signifying a new vendor card that has popped up, or bizarre card that has popped up, that you can go ahead and purchase on a later turn. Uh, another thing to note is shoppers. So for instance, this player's turn here, he can go ahead and freeze by placing a freeze token on a shopper. All that means is the shopper can no longer move or be removed when it has a freeze token on it. However, there are certain bizarre cards that will change that in the game. If he didn't want to freeze, he can move and freeze. So for instance, he has this little vendor here. He might want to move this shopper over here, signifying he's going to score here, and place this little freeze token right there. That will guarantee them getting these specific resources at the end of the day. Uh, then you got uh, this one over here, which is replace and freeze. When you replace and freeze, it's pretty simple. Let's say you didn't want this guy here and you'd rather have this guy here. You can simply take this thing here and you can go ahead and place it underneath this little deck, drawing a new shopper and placing it uh, down on the board somewhere. That is going to allow you to have different resources that you can gain via your booths with the specific shopper. Uh, then you have cards, vendor. It says plus five tokens in today's earnings and bizarre card play from hand. So you can play a card from your hand. Um, and then this one over here is pass. Pass simply means if you, let's say it's this player's turn here, he can go ahead and flip this little token over and that will give him plus three currency of his choice from this pool over here. So he can go ahead and take any of the currency he wants and put it in his wallet. It only goes into the earnings at the end of the day or if a card specifically says otherwise. And those are the main actions. Once all the actions have been played, then the first turn marker is going to pass, all the freeze tokens will be removed, and players are going to gain resources based on their booth and the shoppers providing them with specific resources. So for instance, let's go ahead and just take a couple of these guys out and give you an idea. I uh, remember when you buy a booth area here, the next thing you can do is go ahead and draw three, pick one, and then for the next action, you can go ahead and place. And that is going to give you more resources, hopefully, uh, from the customer. So I'll go ahead and show you a mock example of what something like this will look like. And this one here, let's go ahead and place this guy here, and let's go ahead and place this one over here. Okay, so let's say at the end of the day, this is what it looked like. Uh, everybody has these vendors here. And uh, when you buy a vendor, you're going to get plus five points for that specific day. So you can go ahead and put that there if you got a vendor. So let's go ahead and say that both of them bought a booth this day. Uh, you can go ahead and place fine earnings. If you got a specific character called an assistant from the advanced deck, you can actually gain three or five points depending on where you place it. And you would also gain it in the day, today's earnings. I'll talk about those in a second though. So let's go ahead and now talk about how you're going to be gathering resources at the end of the day. All of the play options have been pushed off. Everybody's taken their five actions. Now you're going to go across the board and see what you score. So we'll go ahead and look at this guy here. So this arrow pointed to this. This is one of your little uh, booths here. This will let you score wild, but unfortunately the arrow does not give you anything because there's nothing here. This guy, however, he's got the lettuce and this little arrow is pointing here and this guy has three lettuce. So this booth here will score three lettuce. This one over here says it scores bucks. 
one of each of these three symbols. There's one buck, so this will go here. And then there's no other booth, so it's, he's going to score these four tokens into today's earnings. On this side of the board, he's also going to score three lettuce, so good for him. And over here, he's going to score one buck as well. And luckily, he managed to get this customer right here, which means he's going to score one of each of these symbols. So, so one lettuce, one buck, and one bread. Then, after that, he will also take all these tokens and place it in today's earnings. Each one of these little tokens here is worth one, and then these area, these little tokens here are worth either five or three points. So if you add it all together, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, plus five is twelve, and this guy over here has five plus four is nine, that would signify that this player has more, thusly he would win the day. Placing one of these tokens here, taking all of these resources and placing them in your wallet, and then the next round of play is going to begin. You'll take these five point markers and move them off of the board. You'll remove any of these frozens, like I said previously, and you're pretty much ready to go again. You'll move the start player token, allowing the next player to begin the game or begin the turn, and you will continue playing. And you'll be moving your shoppers around and freezing them. You'll be buying more of these to these, these uh, bizarre cards that let you do specific actions. Sometimes they'll do attacks. Sometimes they will be specific assistance. Like, for instance, when you buy this guy here for five, let's say he was here, you would spend five bread and if you spent five bread for an action you could take this card and play it on one of your vendors so let's say i put it over here that is going to now allow this specific vendor to take cheese from this guy here or he can go ahead and sell cheese to this guy but this guy doesn't have any cheese so it wouldn't be very beneficial but let's say that he had spent an action to switch or swap this shopper here with this one now on the next end of the day phase this guy has a cheese so because of that assistant he's going to actually score one cheese for today's earnings so assistance can be very very useful there's other cards in here that do certain things some of them will let you collect certain things from shoppers based on the type of currency they have or based on the color of shopper this is a green one this is a red and this is a yellow there's different color shoppers and they do different things based on the cards that are played others will let you go ahead and do something like replace a vendor with the vendor on the draw pile do not collect five points. So you can go ahead and replace a vendor and take a new vendor out. That's that's fairly useful, right? Um, and that can kind of change the way the game is, is going throughout the entire time. Uh, additionally, at the end of a day phase, you're going to move all of these down, replacing it with a new bizarre card. If you're playing the expert mode, you'll take all of them off and put new ones down completely and like i said you'll have these specific extra cards that you can use throughout the game as well with the little e marked expert and they have a bunch of different abilities as well a lot of them involve attacking players and doing really mean things that can really change the game as you're playing it the game is mechanically driven and the more days that go on the more things you're going to have bought the more customers are possibly going to be out and the more currency you're likely going to be scoring at the end of somebody winning five days and it doesn't have to be in a row it's just whoever has gets the five first that player is going to be the winner of bizarre bizarre hopefully that gives you enough information as to how the game is played let's come up and discuss it all right so some caveats let's go ahead and talk about a couple more of these cards first before we get into the review and the first one is going to be twist now some of them are going to say instant play which means when they pop out something instant will happen in twist's case you're going to be replacing all face up bizarre cards from the board remove them and put new ones out kind of changes what's going to be on the board and what you can purchase on your turn you're going to have other things like money for instance it says collect all orange shoppers currency so any orange shoppers on the board when you play the specific card you'll be able to collect their currency uh, move any vendor to a vacant purchase booth vacant booths remain bought wow that can be very useful or collect all red shoppers currency unfreeze and or move and freeze one shopper so just when you thought they're stuck and they're not gonna be able to move and they're gonna benefit your opponent you can play this little crazy little red riding hood gal and all of a sudden now you can go ahead and purchase and now you can go ahead and have the customers purchase from your stall as opposed to your opponents uh, draw two bizarre cards and place them in your hand so purchasing this specific card will allow you to get two new cards and at the cost of four you might actually get two fours which is going to be worth it because you save currency that way and so on and so forth the assistance function like i was explaining in the rules how you can kind of add them to your booths to make your booths a little more viable and customers are going to be more freely able to give you currency which is kind of what you want the game's a crazy little trading game and in essence it's 
going to be very, very competitive and may even become considered a little mean when it comes to the interactions. Uh, the only couple little things I have is certain play interactions, like for instance, when you're able to draw and play a card from the bazaar or having it in your hand and playing it as an action, some of the interactions are kind of a little, just need to be worded just a little better. Um, and the other thing is, of course, the game is very, very aggressive and competitive. So for those of you out there who do not like an aggressive game, this is probably not going to be for you. However, if you do like the style of artwork for this game, it's got this crazy, like, oh, like I guess like 80s vibe to it. It has this like crazy bizarre market with all this interesting artwork. I actually really like the artwork in this game. It has some bizarre, like, like, it reminds me kind of like the Aladdin movie where the guy's sitting there going, would you like to buy my wares? And you see all these different little things. Some of these guys are like uh, this little weird tentacle thing with scissors and he's smoking a cigar or something like that or a bizarre meat grinding robot thing. Like This this bazaar is a weird place to buy anything. I probably wouldn't want to buy anything from this bazaar because it's got some crazy... Well, maybe maybe a dead uncle's chest. That, that might be worth buying. But in general, just kind of this weird vibe, right? Arabian Nights type of vibe. Or, or an underground black market of weird things that you can pick up. And I kind of like that. kind of feels a very interesting, unique style of theme. Uh, the back and forth nature of the game is very fun, and it has this swapping blows type of a thing just when you think you're going to lose. In fact, you might be able to jump back into the game. There are certain cards that will allow you to basically come back. You can Some of them will let you move all the shoppers around and unfreeze them and freeze them. That's very, very powerful. Others are going to allow you to swap certain cards or draw additional action cards that you can use later on a turn that is very good as well the assistants can change the way your booths function and how you interact with the customers that is also beneficial so there's always a way to come back because of that specific the bizarre card so there's a little bit of luck involved in that based on the fact that you don't know what's going to pop up and when it does it may or may not be good for you and you may or may not have the currency enable that you've enabled yourself to be able to purchase based on the shoppers and the stuff you've bought because each of the currency is basically worth one but is viable in terms terms of when you want to purchase stuff from the specific um, area in the bazaar. Uh, another thing to note, too, is moving your booths around and your customers is going to be a very, very important portion of the game, but what's even more important is messing with your opponent. If you can do that, you're going to be solid in this game, and like I said, it has that crazy, like, uh, competitive feel to it. You can play with two players on one side and two players on the other, where you kind of can compete and strategize with each other as to where you want to place certain things, how you want to place them. My wife's very good with this because it has a bit of a puzzle functionality, but it also has a bit of a... I want to say engine building mentality as well, because your engine building throughout this game, you're going to get even more boosts, you're going to be getting more currency, and at the end of every day, the today's earnings is going to be most likely multiplied by a lot, unless somebody did really something nasty to you. And it kind of feels good to be able to place certain things in the bazaar and gather more and more and more currency as the game goes on. I really enjoyed this game, but I'm definitely going to say it's for certain people that really like that not only competitive one-on-one -on -one nature, but also people who like that aggressive strategy where you're just trying to do the best you possibly can. On the back of the box, it kind of even gives a good example of it. It says, you feel pretty mighty when you're winning at Bazaar Bazaar. Get your greed glands flowing as a power broker in this twisted marketplace located in the outskirts of money town thwart your opponent's plan with your personal recipe of devious attacks shrewd maneuvers and luck so it has a little bit of all that but it's nice because a lot of the cards are face up and you're able to see them when you want to buy them and when you want to switch them and you're also able to draw multiple cards and choose one so there's a lot of mitigation in this game as well but overall if you think this game is for you go ahead and take a look down below and check it out and if you want to pick it up go ahead and do so for me i enjoy this game very much as long as you're in for a competitive streak, you're going to enjoy Bizarre Bizarre. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go and check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as take a look at the game Bizarre Bizarre, the two player and or two versus two player game of trinkets and customers purchasing bizarre things in the bazaar. Yeah, uh, I just said it. Also, go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com and The Giveaway Geek, as well as my website, unfilteredgamer.com, tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And don't forget to go ahead and check out our Patreon, as well as whatever else we're going to be posting up here. Thank you guys so much, and I look forward to seeing you purchasing my wares in the bazaar.